Mr. Christina Hardy. Thank you. This is, uh, yeah. Congratulations, Katie. Um, there's certainly been some talk back and forth between Australia and here about the 400, uh, about times, and of course you qualified, but I know you've said already, and your coach has said that that was a little slower than you would have wanted it to be. Could you walk us through again your thought process on that, and then, uh, well, I, actually, I'll, I'll follow up after that. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, first of all, it was just great to get on, on the team. Uh, as I said back in the mix on earlier, it's, uh, it's, it's, the first race is always the toughest, and just in this environment, um, I mean, you can see it tonight, there are so many close races, and uh, there's just that added level of excitement and nervousness and all that. Um, so I, I felt like, I would be faster than that. Obviously, I've been faster than that this season, uh, even in prelims. I remember back in Mission, I was 401 in prelims, and that felt like the easiest thing. So to feel better than, or feel like I was going harder than that yesterday, uh, and my 401, um, I was just surprised by that time. Um, but I think that's just from going out pretty hard, and um, that back 200, I was just just wanted to get the race over with and uh, get to the wall and uh, punch my ticket. So uh, yeah, the time is what it is and I think moving forward uh, I feel more relaxed now and feel like of course I have the rest of the week moving forward but just trying to look for ways to improve between now and, and Tokyo and um, just thinking about the things we need to work on in training and Obviously, it's only a month, so it's not like you can accomplish a whole lot, but uh, I know that the past two Olympic cycles, I have gotten a lot out of those training camps and have used them to my benefit, so I think uh, moving forward, we can, can um, get better from here. Thank you, and just to follow up, because you're in the public eye, and because you're who you are, and you've had the career that you've had, uh, do you expect more Scrutiny, more expectations on you this time around. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, there, there's, there are always expectations uh, out there. Uh, but as I said the other night, I think uh, the most important expectations are the ones that I have for myself, and I think I do a pretty good job of sticking to those and um, not seeing what kinds of medal counts or times that people are throwing out about what I could accomplish if everything goes perfectly. Um, I just have to stick to my own goals and, and that's what I, I do and uh, take it one day at a time. Like, I feel like I did well with that today, uh, one event at a time. Hi Katie, congratulations. Zachary Drapes from Nuts and Bolt Sports. Um, what keeps you going? I mean, obviously you've accomplished so much and you're destined to accomplish plenty more in Tokyo, but what keeps you going? What keeps you focused and what keeps you centered? I mean, every, given everything that's happened this past year with COVID, uh, what was it that made you keep keep going and keep persisting in your career? Really, my, my goals. I, I always have goals for myself and those keep me motivated every day and uh, my teammates, my coaches, um, they motivate me and, and keep me moving forward and that's been so key over the last year where for times we were all scattered around the country and to, you know I really just had Simone and Greg for a couple months uh, to train with and that was great and we really helped each other during that time uh, both from a swimming perspective and just getting through the pandemic um, you know just all those little chit chats after and before practice about life moving forward and <laughs> what's going to happen with the Olympics and trials and all those things. So just thinking back to kind of March through June last year and um, where we are now, it's just uh, it felt surreal yesterday being in the ready room, walking out for a final at Olympic trials. Um, so yeah, it's just the people that I surround myself with, they keep me moving forward and, and my goals. Hi Katie, over the, I'm here, sorry. <laughs> All right, um, over the next 12 to, I guess like 14 hours, 
until you're back racing again. What do you do to get yourself into a mode where you can jump right back in after you've already had some high stress races? Well, I'm taking tomorrow morning completely off. <laughs> um, you know, just between all the racing I've done today and uh, yesterday, and just kind of the days leading up to the first race, you know, all the different practices and stuff, um, just haven't had a good, you know, solid block off. And so we, we pl planned out this whole week in advance and tried to plot out when I could you know, I did a longer warm down tonight so that I could take the morning off. Um, I also haven't been outside in like three days, so <laughs> I'm uh, planning on doing a little bit of that tomorrow to get some fresh air. And uh, I think uh, I knew today was probably, or this morning was probably the hardest session. Uh, it might sound funny given that tomorrow it's the finals of the same two races as this morning, but just coming off of it last night into the morning and then having another semi, I just knew today would be the hardest day and I can use use the morning tomorrow to reset a little bit and attack tomorrow night. Uh, Kate, Greg was saying that you might be better at compartmentalizing. I wonder if you agree with that and how difficult is that, whether it's uh, you know tackling two races in a session or moving past a disappointing time? Yeah, I think uh, I've gotten better at at that and probably following instructions and uh, just, yeah, I mean, I think I, if I had gone to 157 in prelims and the two free a couple years ago, I probably would have been like a wreck. <laughs> Not a wreck, but just, I just would have let it bother me, but this morning I was just able to roll it off and say, okay, I, I got the job done, that's all I needed to do this morning and roll into my mile and felt good there, so uh, just, I think I've, I've learned how to take in things one step at a time and uh, I've gotten better at, at those kinds of things and I've gotten better with practices. Um, if I have bad practice, I don't let it get to me. Um, I really haven't had too many of those over the past couple months, so that's a good thing. But I think just knowing that I'm better at those kinds of things leads to better practices, better weeks and months and ultimately seasons. Uh, strung together and uh, yeah, it, it's it's. I, I think I've grown a lot, um, both in and out of the pool, and I've learned a lot. I'm experienced now, and uh, just know how to to manage um, both the physical and mental aspects of the sport. Katie, a little bit of a follow-up to that. Um, you know, you don't have surprises like that too often. You've been amazingly consistent since. 2012. Um, is it, you know, maybe you're managing things, you and Greg, and, but but kind of outside that, the next layer, like family, friends, I mean, do you have to ever say, hey, not, you know, hey, you guys, calm down a minute here, everything's okay, do you, do you have to do that at all, you know, with your with your inner circle? No, um, my parents are extremely supportive, and so if I'm happy, they're happy, and if, you know, I, I talk to them about swimming from time to time, and, um, they're here and they're here to support me and honestly I last night after I got back to the hotel um, that was the first time my immediate family had been in the room together since I think Christmas of 2019 so honestly just being here it's been kind of like a reunion for me and uh, we just had kind of a moment where <laughs> like, I started crying they started crying it was like three-time Olympian uh, just kind of hit me and um, just so nice to be back with them. Um, you know, we've all been through so much over the past year, and I think you kind of take things for granted, and we don't want to take things for granted. And so, um, it's just nice to have those moments to celebrate with them. And I have really great friends as well, getting lots of messages of support, and um, it just means a lot. Two questions for you, Katie. I I think you took a photo with Aaron when you got out of the pool after the 200. Could you ever have imagined that scenario where you're in an Olympic trial semi with Aaron? Honestly, I could. Uh, that girl's amazing. Um, I, I couldn't have imagined it when I first met her when she was seven years old. Uh, but uh, you could just see over the past couple years her progression and her drive and 
Uh, it's honestly pretty similar to what I had when I was uh, her age. And of course, she has really great role models in the sport with her older brother, Andrew, being an Olympian, and Bruce with all the success he's had. And her mom swam in college as well. So uh, she just has great people around her and has had some really great coaches and, and teammates that I know. Um, she goes to my high school, Stone Ridge. Uh, school of Sacred Heart, Phoebe also does. Uh, so we had three. Stone Ridge Gators in a semi-final or final tonight, which was really exciting. And so since Aaron and I were in the same heat, we were getting out of the pool around the same time. So I said, Aaron, smile real quick for a picture so we could at least get uh, a picture. Phoebe, Aaron, and I have to, have to still get our, our Stone Ridge picture, but figured we'd at least get one of the two of us. A real quick follow about your family. You can tell how much it meant to you to have everybody together last night. Um, what does it mean to you that your uncle went to the lengths that he did to be in the room with you last night? Uh, well, he actually wasn't. Um, I still haven't haven't really talked to him or seen him, but he's been running around. He stayed for my prelims this morning um, and then booked it to the airport to make it to Tampa. He's in Tampa right now for the game. I think it's 1-1 one -one unless somebody scored in the five or ten minutes since we've been here uh, and then he's uh, coming back either tonight or tomorrow morning he's gonna make my finals tomorrow so uh, it's incredible I mean he's such a great supporter as well and really kind of a part of our immediate family as well and um, yeah I, I, he's been texting me and uh, I just appreciate the effort he's made so much and uh, it's, it's so cool that we have these things going on right now together, and I hope he's getting a little bit of rest. All right, Katie, I wanted to ask you about a couple of swimmers that you have a lot of history with. Uh, first off, Allison Schmidt, I mean, here. She's still, you know, going strong and doing what she's doing. I wonder if you could fill us in on just what your first interaction was with her, and then also what it means to, to see her, uh, you know, still going at this age, and then also looking toward the Olympics, same thing with uh, Federica, she's announced that you know she's going to retire after this year. You guys have had some great races over the past, I wonder if you could just talk a little bit about watching watching them as, as more of a youngster and then just what it's been like seeing them still go strong now. For sure, yeah. Um, I guess I'll start with Allison. Uh, she's such a great friend, such a great teammate, and as you said, she's been doing this for so long and uh, has just been such a force in our sport and uh, both in and, in and out of the pool and um, I think my first interaction with her was probably in 2011 at, I oh know, 2012 in the spring at the Charlotte Ultra Swim. Uh, that was kind of a breakout meet for me and uh, I got to race Allison a few times and uh, was just thrilled to be in a lane next to her and uh, she was so kind and so, so supportive and just uh, you know, I think she was there, Michael was there, and of course they're good friends, and all these Olympians, Katie Hoff I think was there, she gave me the award uh, the other night, um, and they were all coming up to me, you know, saying like, good job, we're like, you know, like, keep it up. Um, so then we went to London together, obviously, Schmitty and I, and um, I got to know her there, but I think, you know, our friendship has really taken off over the, the last couple of years, and um, just we've been on a lot of trips together, so I'm excited to see what she does the rest of the week. I think it would be great if she she's on that team and uh, she'll just bring really great leadership, uh, again, both in and out of the pool. Um, and then in terms of Federica, yeah, <laughs> she's had a really great career as well and uh, her consistency is so impressive, especially in that tune and free and how basically every world championship since I don't I don't even know the year, like the early 2000s that she's won a medal. So uh, she's such a tough competitor um, and I, I know that she's probably got a big year ahead of her um, and I remember to your other question about growing up when I was younger, I remember when she first broke four minutes in the 400 and uh, I think that was around the time where I was kind of starting to dial into the mid-distance and distance freestyle events. So I remember uh, watching that race and watching a lot of the 
races from the World Championships in 2009 and just uh, being so inspired to set bigger goals for myself and um, just she, I think it's always impressive when somebody breaks a barrier and of course she was the first one to do that and now I've done that, Ariane's done that, um, I don't think anyone else has done that but I'm sure there will be a couple more that will do that in the, the coming months or, or years so uh, yeah she set the stage in that event and the standard and of course in the 200 as well. Hey, Katie, Katie Shim, Team USA Network. Um, can you talk about some of the younger women who are making the team? Take yourself back, I guess it's nine years, I was gonna say eight years back, when you were the 15 year old. Um, how you're gonna probably be a mentor to them, but you also have a pretty heavy, you'll probably, I'm assuming, because you're the great kid, like that you're gonna win all these races, you have a pretty heavy schedule in Tokyo, like how you're gonna balance all that. Oh, yeah, I'm so excited. Uh, you know, you never know exactly how the team is gonna pan out, but Already you can see that there are, I don't know how many now, four or five teenagers um, and Olympic rookies as well, uh, not just teenagers. So it's going to be a really fun team, I think. Uh, they'll bring a lot of excitement and new energy and uh, I hope I can be a mentor to them, as you said, and uh, just help them manage the, the energy and um, you know, they're, they're gonna be so excited and, and you've gotta use that to your benefit. I mean, I remember in London just having that one race. I love just having a front row seat at the Olympics for five or six days and watching all of these swimmers that I've watched for so many years swim. Uh, and I, I definitely use that. I use that as inspiration and I hope they can, can do the same and have a really great experience. I know that uh, this, this summer's Olympics might not look exactly what uh, past Olympics have looked like. They might not have their family there and things like that. So I think it's all the more important that the older swimmers on the team kind of serve as their family. And I think uh, once we get together for a training camp, we can, can come together as a family. And um, even in, in the coming week and a half, when after trials we all go back home, um, you know, I, I hope I can reach out to some of them and make sure that they know that uh, they can shoot me a message or pick up the phone and call if they have any questions or anything they want to talk about going into it. You said in the zone that you felt more nervous than you thought you would yesterday or more than usual. And I'm wondering why that would be when you also alluded here that you very rarely have a bad day in practice. You put in the work. So this is supposed to be the fun part for you. Um, so why do you think there were more nerves? Yeah, I, th I think it just goes back to what I was saying earlier about how we were in this venue with so many fans, the, the noise, all of it. Uh, just was something we hadn't experienced all year, or really in two years. I mean, if you think back, the last really big meet I've swam at was Guangzhou, and uh, that wasn't the most pleasant experience for me. So I think just uh, being back in that environment was um, just, it, I just needed a reminder of what that felt like. and. Uh, you know, you, you can't take for granted that you're going to make the team, and I think you see that across all the events. There are always surprises and always fast swims being thrown down, best times by other swimmers and things like that. So uh, I respect my competitors so much and respect swimming in the U.S. that I um, I have those nerves that everyone else has. I mean, it's, it's a tough meet. I don't think I can point to one exact thing because as you've seen at this meet, there are the really young swimmers, like 15, 16, that are making it. There are the ones about to go to college that are you know, maybe 18 or 19. And we've got swimmers from Virginia, like Tori. We've got swimmers from Alaska, like Lydia. Uh, it's all over. And I think it just speaks to the depth of swimming in our, our country. and. As I said, the great club system, great club coaches that uh, know what they're doing, and um, you know that the U.S. has such a great history of swimming. I think a lot of young swimmers get really inspired to set those big goals from a pretty young age, and 
uh, yeah, just they're unafraid, and and it's it's fun to see. Hey, Katie. Um, Tori last night said she heard that you had predicted what her time would be. So I'm very like, proud of this. It looks like that's true. Um, how often do you make predictions like that, and how often are you right? I, I don't often. Uh, I was just getting out of the warm down pool yesterday, and the honeyfly was going to start in about, I don't know, 10 minutes. And I was like, what do you think Tori's going to go? And I said, hmm, 55. It's like, I think she's going to go faster than she did the night before. I think a little more than a 10th. Uh, so I was like, 55, 6. And he goes, 6 what? I was like, 66. And then she goes, 55, 66. Uh, so yeah, her coach Evan was giving me a hard time that I should have predicted faster. So I told him that I would, would do that in Tokyo. <laughs> Did you spend much time around her? Um, were you involved in her recruitment process at all? And just what are your impressions of what she's doing and still going to do here? I haven't spent a ton of time around her. She's from the same LSC as uh, I am, Potomac Valley swimming, and uh, of course she's younger than me, so it's not like we swam against each other very much when I was younger. But uh, I, I think the first time I really met her was actually probably Christmas 2019, last time I was back home. Uh, she was training at a long course pool in Virginia called the St. James, and I had booked some time there as well to train long course. Uh, so she was there with a couple of her teammates, uh, and I was there with maybe one or two teammates, um, or with an NCAP group. And so yeah, we chatted a little bit after practice, got to know her coach a little bit as well, and. Um, I don't, I don't remember if I was at Stanford when she was on her recruiting trip or we didn't have a ton of interaction, but I've actually probably had the most interaction I've had with her here. Uh, she and Reagan have been sort of sitting with our Stanford team since they're the only ones from their club team here at the meet. So of course they're coming to Stanford in the fall and so they're part of our, our family and uh, I've been so impressed with Tori. Uh, yesterday she was sitting on the couch that we're sitting on doing origami about 30 minutes before her race like so calm uh so if she's she's got her head on straight she's gonna gonna continue to to do some great things and uh really can't can't wait to be on the team with her thanks um for everybody else just to let you know we have another full slate